Post-Civil War years saw a real growth in Carroll County. The soldiers came back, returned to their farms or their businesses, began to plant new crops, started new families, schools grew up, towns grew, um, new businesses appeared. There were a lot of foundries and manufacturing plants that sprung up around the county. Where water was productively powering the mills, it also showed its destructive side to the town of Sykesville. In 1868, um, there was a flood that hit town that really just changed the course of where Sykesville was going to be on the map. There had been this huge rainstorm on the upper part of the valley, and by uh, in Mount Airy, it had just rained at that point about 18 inches. As the Patapsco River overflowed its banks, it began raging along the river valley, picking up strength and speed and wiping out all of the dams in its path. It just left this, this just absolute mess in its wake. And uh, so when the town started to dig out and rebuild, it rebuilt on the northern side of the river. And so that's why Sykesville really is now just in Carroll County. One of the interesting stories uh, about African Americans in Carroll County has to do with a man named Sebastian Boss Hammond. He was born a slave, and we're not quite sure who taught him, but he learned how to do stone carving. And his owner would have Boss doing stone carving for other people, and then the owner would keep the profits from that. But he apparently let Boss keep some of the money as well because Boss eventually saved up enough money to purchase his own freedom. The freed African Americans would locate in a village of their own or at one end of town uh, in a uh, four or five housing lots together. And then they would work with the local industry or work uh, in households uh, in that community uh, and serve as a, um, as a small community. Uh, usually with their own church and their own social traditions. They were two, two different worlds, two different societies. Uh, there was the white society, the white world, and the black society. And we weren't black that time, we were colored uh, society. Uh, and, and the separation actually was, was, was only socially. You worked side by side on, in the fields, but you were separated uh, when time came to go to, to dinner. Segregation was a strict uh, policy in this, in, this, in this area. Only contact between the races was incidental. Uh, uh, blacks worked in, uh, in uh, various kinds of service jobs. Uh, the women worked as domestics. Uh, the men worked at odd jobs, worked on the farms, worked cleaning yards. Because you're black, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do the other, uh, this kind of a thing. You can't go in the movie theater and sit downstairs. You can't go into a, a hotel and stay. You can't go into a restaurant, uh, the front door. You've got to go around back. Public accommodations were strictly uh, uh, segregated. Uh, uh, transportation was strictly segregated. So uh, with restrictions like that, which you understood, your parents taught you that's the way things are gonna be, uh, that's the way that uh, life was. It didn't scare me. It uh, made me angry. Because still, I can't understand why somebody has the right to simply do these things to another human being. My parents didn't tell me I could grow up and be president. But I, I think our parents tried to shield us from, from disappointments and, and, and made sure that we did the best we could do and, and went as far as we could go. I believe that's when my hunger for equality started. This had to change. It had to change. As the county developed, 
and the nation developed, we began to get rail, railroad transportation as the major form of an economic driving force. And all of the communities in Carroll County wanted access to the railroad. Transportation uh, always was key to town developments. And if the railroad passed you by, as it did in some Carroll County towns, those towns did not grow. Westminster, obviously, being a county seat, was always going to be a center of commerce, government, industry, and so forth. So the railroad coming here in the 1860s cemented that position for transportation and commerce. The coming of the railroad to Union Bridge was a big thing because the farmers could take their milk right to the town, down to, to the railroad station. Milk could now be gotten from the farm into the city in a matter of hours. Another trend in economic history that you see in Carroll County tracking national uh, trends is the uh, consolidation of industry into large manufacturing processes. You can see this in a, in a number of uh, industries that continued uh, from early 1900s to the mid-1900s, such as the cigar factories, the clothing manufacturing, but maybe more than anything else, the canning factories represent that phase. It was not unusual to have a canning factory near each town in Carroll County. That way the farmers did not have to transport their product very far before it could be canned. The backbone of this community was the agricultural industry. At one time, actually, in the early 1900s, this was considered to be the fourth richest agricultural county in the United States. Canneries grew up around the county in places like Silver Run and Westminster and Mount Airy and New Windsor. Uh, they could process those things that could then be shipped to urban markets throughout the country and uh, became world famous uh, by the 20th century. Uh, B.F. Shriver products were being shipped to all over the world and in fact uh, there, we once met a World War I soldier who remembered being in the trench in France and being handed a can of Shriver corn as part of his daily ration and sat there and said, this is from my home. There was an A.W. Fieser cannery company and then there was a smaller one uh, and they, I think they did corn. Um, the A.W. Fieser had several plants. They had one in Tawnytown, one in uh, Keymar, one in Silver Run. There was a, a Tawnytown manufacturing company that manufactured men's suits. There was also one that did ladies' dresses. And um, the Cambridge Rubber Company, which was uh, during the war, uh, produced, it, it produced a, a lot of uh, rubber products that were used by the troops. Worm seed was one of the unique Carroll County products. It was a very difficult plant to grow, but Carroll County had the ideal uh, soils and climate for that. So it was a product that was used in vermifuge, a medicine for livestock. There were paper mills um, down in the southern part of the county near Morgan Station. There was the large Woodbine paper mill, uh, and there was another big one up in the northeastern part of the county called the Hoffman paper mills. We also saw the growth of textile mills in places like Oakland, um, where they had grown up from the early part of the century. As sister cities, both Manchester and Hampstead vied for access to the railroad. But Hampstead uh, was able to get a rail line uh, earlier, and then uh, it became really the economic center of the area. In response, Manchester's industry changed to be uh, an industry that did not need heavy transportation. And so you had a lot of uh, cigar factories locate on Main Street. Making cigars is a labor-intensive industry that does not need heavy manufacturing. They were rolled by hand. They could be transported by uh, a horse-drawn carriage down to the rail lines. At one time, we had eight cigar factories in the Manchester area. The, the folks, some of them were the women who were farmers' wives and their children were no longer with them, so they didn't have to stay home and take care of me. So they would come in and make cigars. My grandmother put the, the, the finished product into a cellophane uh, cover. And uh, my sister at one time helped her do that.
Union Mills was a thriving uh, enterprise probably until the, the turn of the century when uh, the railroads uh, took away business. It no longer was profitable to ship long distances by wagon and by horse-drawn uh, vehicles. And so a lot of the supporting businesses and the larger industries moved to the urban and city areas of the state. And uh, Union Mills kind of wound down to a quiet rural setting and their businesses uh, closed up. In 1896, outgoing Governor Frank Brown uh, decided to sell his farm, and the state of Maryland at the time was really looking for a second location for a mental hospital, and sort of the two things coincided. It started out predominantly as a white man's hospital, and then in the early part of the 1900s it added women on the other side of the Little Piney Run River. With desegregation, of the hospitals, they added African Americans to the population. Really, Sykesville throughout the 1900s sort of mirrored the hospital in terms of growth. Uh, the hospital became one of the largest employers in the county. The Union Bridge area has a history of having uh, large limestone deposits. It's part of a, uh, a formation called Wakefield Marble. It's an area that's, uh, that's been used for that limestone for, for many years. Farmers have, have mined it and burned it for field lime. These limestone deposits were noted to be ideal for the manufacture of Portland cement. A local businessman, B.T. Scott, immediately saw the opportunity for a great investment. The investors that, uh, that came together and, and, uh, and, and formed this comp new company called Tidewater Cement Company purchased about 200 acres, several farms on the south side of uh, Union Bridge, came to an agreement then with the Western Maryland Railroad to run rail uh, tracks uh, into the site of the facility and uh, began the process of designing and constructing uh, a cement plant. The construction there started in 1909 and they were manufacturing the lime in 1910. When the cement plant uh, construction began, hundreds and hundreds of workers poured into the town. In fact, the, uh, the railroad uh, had to change its uh, schedule so that uh, it would coincide with uh, people coming to town to st for the start of work shifts during the construction. All of the economic benefits of those jobs uh, accrued to, to the Union Bridge community and area. In 1925, Lehigh Portland Cement Company bought the Tidewater Portland Cement Company. Over the years, Lehigh has expanded and modernized, becoming the high-tech plant that it is today. When we talk about the ordinary life of Carroll County residents, that doesn't mean that there weren't people who became prominent in their fields in the county. A good example is William Henry Reinhardt, a late 19th century artist and sculptor. He was raised uh, in McKinstry's Mills outside of Union Bridge. Of course, there's a lot of limestone here and marble. And so he became, he started doing some sculpturing work and then he got involved with the Walters family from the Walters Art Gallery. He later went to Baltimore and studied in a studio uh, and then uh, was recognized as a major artistic talent uh, in America at the time and is known for some major works uh, in this region, uh, including uh, the brass doors uh, at the Capitol were his design. He did the uh, statue that we have a copy of at the town square uh, for Mrs. Walter's grave over at um, uh, Greenmount Cemetery. He did a lot of things for the Walter's family. 